Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary pacifist corner let's play. We continue for episode 10 from turn 100 in the summer season of 210. So we trigger the Kingdom event and we have the Kingdom of Shuhan, Kingdom of Yan, and Kingdom of Wei. And we have this giant empire that's bigger than any of them and they have to figure out if they want to suicide against us because we're not declaring war on anyone. That's part of our playstyle. We did mess up our untrustworthiness to confederate or annex um, Lady Wu's faction. So that came at a cost, but I think it's a worthwhile one. We can still try to purchase land, it'd just be a little bit more expensive for us. And uh, spies are a main uh, method we can use to expand. We were hoping... that Guojia could give us territory, but he was promoted into higher positions. Wang Fuzong's alive. I thought he had died. We have his bow. Uh, Cao Cao's got some new characters. It's gonna be hard for us to steal them now because as you can see, there's no negative factors. He has a very small court. He has the Imperial court, multiple characters providing satisfaction boost multiple characters in those positions. So I think Guo Jia's mission is complete. We're going to pull him out. I think Cao Cao has the mistrust. Yes, so this is still active. We can basically say 15-15 and spend the rest somehow. Um, I think we, yeah, we can't even discredit anyone except for, hmm. All right, we'll leave a potential character here. No, even he's not willing to flip, so that's that's out of the question. That's fine. We will end up wasting about 20 points here. I I don't think there's anything to do. Poison military provisions? Like, what's the point? Doesn't actually get us anything. Uh, can't do that anymore. Gotta extract. We're happy to take what's that back. Now this is slightly more interesting. Now we don't have the interference active. Maybe we should run that first. And then we'll do this. It's gonna be one action only regardless. The fact that she is administrator makes her a decent choice. Hmm. We could try out another faction. There could be surprise characters in their faction. But um I kinda want to Okay, maybe we don't we don't need to sit, leave six positions open. Zanba has been wanting to ditch Tao Tian forever. Hmm. Sure, let's see who's in the faction. Right, Lady Mi will be the most attractive. Oh, death of a friend. Death of a friend, you say. Plus 11. Wow, definitely need interference then. Plus 12 on that front. Okay, okay. Oh, I can't do math. Okay, we had to wait a few turns until this hits... Yeah, it's going to be a few turns before we're going to do anything. Let's diversify a little bit more to Liu Chong's faction. Okay, Xun Yu. And that's pretty much it. We can work on administrators, hoping to flip them. So his capital is in Intrant, which means Luoyang is a potential. First, take a look. Plus four. Let's gamble that he doesn't have... Okay, he doesn't have any defenses there. Now it's cheaper. I want to tackle her, though. So discredit faction first. Any new characters with the minus 10? No. I'm also going to peek into Shi Xie's faction. Sun Ren 
Right. She escaped our. Oh, she got married off before we annexed. That's why she's here. She's part of the family. So many administrators. Oh, she is administrator of their capital, though. So we can't take it. Plus 14. Wow, what a. Plus 14 on both. Okay, we got a way to turn. Be smart about it. Might as well take a peek. If there's no good characters, we can always fire. There's one open slot. Uh, yes, there is no good character here at all. There is a... But this is their capital, Yemen. So... I mean, we paid for him. So let me get a little bit of value from him. And we'll disown him. Fun times. All right, we'll wait till next turn to see what else we can do. I think we'll take a few turns to kind of digest the land we took in, which might mean we have to lower taxes because a lot of the new land would have faction support issues. We don't want that to spur any rebellion too quickly. Because the more counties it has, the more faction support hit it will get. Okay, so it will take us a little bit of time to get everything in order. Tall's Hall has a piece of this. I wonder if he's willing, like, what, what is the price on this? Not too bad. Respectability is 10 points. So imagine without the treachery... We would actually be buying this for 15.3. So that's a bit unfortunate. Now this is going to be just a pretty simple state workshop for corruption reduction. We're actually going to downgrade it back to a small city. Badong. Mm, I mean, this is fine. Looks like we're probably going to do Corruption Reduction. And I'm not sure. Because of the diversity of the income. It literally has all three income. I'm looking for someone with... Boost to all income sources. I think we found our guy. And then we're probably going to keep the tall build then. And then private workshop. And then Academy of Culture. So just like a lot of base income buildings. Probably the way to go. We're going to build the Corruption Reduction building there. Ah, ah, we're not building this one anymore. Who's going to be our... Oh, I know. We kept... Zhou Jiang's... Com uh, what's his name? Jiang Chiu, right. Nanhai's old owner. Oh, no, 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 no. What am I doing? We are going to click him here. Confirm. We're going to give him Yi Zhou. It's his own little island. He's 62. I guess because he's our vassal. I mean, if we become someone else's vassal... We will just, he'll be liberated, but we can still keep the trade, which is all that I care about. I don't care about the fact that he's our vassal. Right, he starts out with a stone pig. We'll grab that. He starts out with like 2,000 in cash. But we don't care about that. So I'm actually willing to pay him to like me a bit more. So we want to boost that to 5.0. 5.1 is fine. 
And we got a pretty nice trade route. So essentially this trade route, 1,700 nigh, it's more than the island will ever make us. And on top of that, we can't get adjacent corruption reduction from it, so it doesn't really have a lot of value for us. Which is why we decided to make that our vassal. I'm not going to create too many vassals, because I do like holding land, especially since these land are pretty continuous. There's no real point to divide it up. And uh, corruption reduction is what we're going to focus on pretty much everywhere, given that uh, it's rampant, 72%. Imagine our income without corruption. Makes sense since we are suddenly building up. Now places like Poyang where it's going to have administrator, it's going to have neighboring commandery providing that corruption reduction uh, will actually be more income focused. Now Pingman is also kind of weird because it's our only northern one. I don't know if the river breaks adjacency bonuses. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. But like we can decide that later. I can convert that after it's complete. All right, that's upgrading. Oh, not high. It's huge. So private workshop will probably stay. I don't want it to be this. Okay, the school can be gone. The inn building will probably stay, but we'll convert it to a T. I don't need that multiplier. I don't need this. We need a state workshop, and then we'll keep these buildings, and this will be fine. Um, do I have? I have. Actually, I probably should have. Actually, no, that's a conversion. That doesn't get any discounts. We'll find a commerce. Oh, we had one. I saw one earlier. Oh, that's not going to work. Yeah, she has extra bonus. There we go. All right, we're going to convert that. And we're going to get food. Food multiplier. Corruption reduction. Corruption reduction. Corruption reduction. Dayan's also going to get an industry boosting administrator. I believe we have a few of those, actually. Well, there's one. No, no, no. Not her. That's from her skill tree. We want to see an additional 5% from industry. Him. Because we know the 15 is on his skill tree. He'll pick that up eventually. Semi is excellent, but I don't trust him. We need to give him a position. He will probably, I mean, if we end up getting like Jianning or actually, no, he has, he asked for independence. It's kind of weird. I don't think we'll give him a administrator post. We'll give him a court position for sure. I might hang on to this just to pick up a reform. That's going to be a flip. That's going to be a flip. That's not going to be a flip. We're going to try to use the adjacent ones to take care of it. I'm not going to spend money on that just yet. There's still plenty of commanderies that needs to be fixed. That's perfect. That's not needed. That's not needed. Tea house. I don't think we want this, actually. It does provide food. It's not terrible. I think Changsha actually gets downgraded. That's the thing. I think we get or we'll leave it alone for now. I think it's time to get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. We're going to put a state workshop for corruption reduction. We have 12k. Okay, we'll build the rest later. Let's fix our courts. My youth's not easy to keep happy. Ooh, who do we fire? I think she'll be fine, given that she's only level four. 
So her desire higher office is not bad. Thirty-six. Yeah, we'll survive. Now we can spend money on the other things. So this is super food production area. Upgrade the mines. I mean, we got shaft mining. That's why we have all those mine upgrades. We will take this for now. We don't have enough spice to justify the other production. We'll just go in water. Until we run out of cash, which might be now. I mean, we lower the tax, it should be fine. Uh, we are downgrading, so that's actually going to be a empty slot soon. Spies are fine. Diplomacy. Lobo still really wants to be part of our faction. Poor guy. I mean, a lot of these have very close values. Like, they're low enough that I know if I get the smiley face up, like, I can get Liu right now if I want to. Yuan Shao. With a ultimatum, we can pick him up. Liu Chuan as well. Don't mean as well. We can pick up a bunch of actions, actually. I don't know if we want to or not. That's the thing. I feel like through diplomacy, we can probably pick up all the non three kingdom faction right now. But then what? Let me first fix the corruption in my existing territory before making it worse through expanding. I think that's probably the goal. We are going to use our seasonal deployment because we are in a war. We kept them on the field because we think two sentinels plus a strategist makes a pretty good army. Not gonna lie, I gotta find someone that works well with them. I mean, Liu Yao was their boss, we can do triple sentinels, but I feel like a strategist... Well, I guess if we're not doing... Yeah, if we're not running any siege weapons, then triple sentinels is fine. And the whole idea is, is as long as they're over a level, oh, we don't have cash. I mean, it's fine. We got to get the deployments out. That's the key. So over here, we technically are not at war with any Naman faction, but I'm not sure that's going to stay that way. So first, he needs to be recalled. That's why this army is here. Chengpu works well with them. I feel like that works. Taishu also works. But we haven't really used Chengpu yet, and we won't, we won't be using any army. We have one more deployment, and we have this army also on the field. This is a weird army. We know who we want here, because apparently Lady Wu and Zhou Tai are Oathworns, so he will activate her bonus, or she will activate his bonus, and we're going to give him a good weapon for that. I guess all I care about is damage. I don't really care about evasion because my undying will kills that. We'll get some additional armor. Fatigue rate for our own unit. I think there is one that gives melee cav. Not that we might we might not have any melee cav to be honest. Yeah, just more damage for him. He's either damage or speed. Maybe more, just more melee cav damage. Because she might be running melee cav. He's the only one who needs to be decked out right now. It's fine. It's going to be a weird army. We only have militia level cavalry. Alright, we got our deployments. Three season deployment used up. That's the key. Let's continue. We'll fix corruption first. See where our income is at. And we'll send this army over to attack Taran soon. We'll have them also arm up and also go over soon. 
And then we'll go from there. All right, so in the future, it's also can't keep any of his vassals. Has to liberate all of them. He's just a bit weak right now. I want to say that we did it. Oh, no turncoats. Let's see if we can change that. Drop John Faye doesn't really help us. I don't know who might turn. I mean, he has so many family members. These are, are, are these all his kids who just come of age? Four daughters? I need to know who might turn. Uh, it's Gamble who might be the turncoat. Or we can wait till next turn to run the faction one to see if we can get anyone in the faction to go down. So we will have to do a faction one here as well. He has a lot of spy defense. We gotta wait. Yeah, he's 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 a messed up one. Alright, we hit him with a mistrust. Jun Yu, Luo Jun are both pretty good. But that's about it. And they're both very happy. The only other character we kind of want is the administrator of Loyang here. So we're also going to wait for points here. Similar ideas. We need to hit him with a mistrust first. Plus 22 should be enough. There we go. He's a good spy. There's potential here. Yeah, this turn's not, not gonna work for us. We're gonna wait till next turn. I can't believe Tarin doesn't want to peace out with us. It's kind of suicidal. I don't know what he has. Maybe we don't hop into water and hop out. There's a little crossing here. We can use that next turn. Uh, Taran's attacking us. <laughs> he took Taopi with him. <laughs> and Taong. Man, Tao Tao is a sad man. Alright, they're looking to attack Danyang. Who is Danyang's... Um... He's new. He's level 1, so I can't give him a retinue. That's okay. I mean, the garrison... Iffy. I think... We want to stand outside, we want to encamp, and then we want to recruit. And then we'll raise another army here. Should we just raise the Xiaohou brothers to scare him off? Danger Strategist, this is going to be one of our standard armies. Zhou Yu. I guess we'll keep the units. It's not like we have anything special to add to it. I think we do add two siege weapons here. Actually, I don't know. Like I said, with the way we never do offensive battles, I don't know if siege weapons are actually useful at all. That's a terrible unit. Let's swap it to uh, Spear Guard. Keep everything else. Yeah, looks good. That way we're not worried about him coming over and he's kind of going to have to consider whether he can beat all of us together. And I'm assuming that's his only army. We once again used up our deployments. And we're going to just go around and build as many state workshops as we can. Those go down first. We will downgrade Nanhai after we get all the buildings to rank 5, I think? That's the building we want everywhere, pretty much. 
except for the really high income potential areas. We're out of cash. Yeah, unfortunate we had to build up our military, but um, should be fun. Let's see what he does. If we notice the faction support start going down, we can probably raise taxes. But our plus 10 will end next will, will end next spring, so we have to see what we get from our council. Let's see if he's brave enough to come attack. I mean, the longer he waits, the less of a chance he has, so I don't know what he will do. He backed off. Okay. Unless they have items, I don't think we're recruiting anyone. I mean, we're going to fire them afterward, but we do want the items. Okay. I mean, I think we wait till we're full health before we move to the offense to join Coron there. Attitude starting to dip, which is normal and fine actually. Or else how are we gonna get wars declared on us? And continue with our round of state workshops whenever and wherever we can. Diane is one of those income places. He's going to get the benefit of surrounding areas. So probably want to increase this level as well. Might be a splurge. Yeah, I think Dong actually isn't an income place. And we might actually make more by reducing it. And reducing it from the surroundings as well. No build slots. That might do it. I think we're poor now. Make sure we have mistrusts. We do. Not what we were looking for. I mean, Luo Jun is the only one who we are slightly looking for here. The administrator here has shown no desire. Any chance Luo Jun is now available? Nope. Okay. We need to do mistrust. Okay, we have it. And then... Start with her. Maybe the air. That might be an angle that we have. Nope, not willing to rebel. Have to wait then. Not enough points. We haven't even done interference here yet. Because of the defense he's been putting up. And now we're set up for the future, I guess. I don't know who would declare war on us first. Oh, Tarn had enough right away. Can we? I can't. I think for these factions that form out of a civil war, you can't actually annex them. They have to be destroyed. The question is, we don't have to be the one that destroys them.
right? This is all we really need to do here. Is get land. We have so many items in inventory. Okay, we don't need his money. I might even want a little bit of positive relationship with him. Oh, right, we don't have money. Uh, we can offer him more food. And then a little bit of money. There we go. Now, according to our rules, we have to disband all armies at this point. That is an interesting setup for ourselves. We'll follow them. Am I going to pay the redeployment costs? Yeah, let's do the... We'll pay the redeployment costs. Because basically, when we recruit them again, we're recruiting the same units. Not terrible. Now, these are a little bit different. I, don't, uh, I guess we want to keep these units. The Tindro units are really nice. And we really don't have many cavalry options. Alright, because we're at peace with everyone... I think we are at peace with everyone. Yes, we are. We can't keep any armies. That's just basically our rule. And we're gonna keep it. Alright. Peace at last. And this will encourage the AI to declare war on us, because they'll be like, this faction has no military strength. <laughs> uh, it's always the idiots. Okay, we got spies returning. We'll side with Luger there. I mean, I know he's down to a son. He just came of age. I should just kick him out, I think. Okay, now we're at war again. We can we can put units on the field. Probably here in True Beat. We can only raise three, so basically one army at a time. It's gonna probably be Zhengjiang and Korong's army. Who is their third? It's the bandit girl, right? Because we want poison volley. Where is she? There she is. Uh, none of them have the good leading skills. I really wish we could redo her skill tree, but she's joined us quite a while, so it's going to be difficult. Not really relevant. I guess we can give her this. Okay. So that's that. I guess that's the trick to get someone to declare war on you. You literally show nothing. We do have eight trade routes. So I actually wonder if 10% trade influence is going to give us that much more money. I don't think so. I actually think the flat 100 is better in this case. Guess this is not going to get downgraded, so we do want to build it up. A little bit of ink. This place is a weird place too. It's going to get all three types of income, but I think we're just going to keep it a food focused. So we're not really going to focus on the income side. 
Same thing here. Food focus. Yeah, like I said, I think this is a weird place, but let's swap it. I don't think it's going to impact the corruption in, let's say, Luan. I don't think it's adjacent. Uh, I'm talking about Pingyuan. Luan's switch will, will work, won't matter, but Pingyuan's switch wouldn't. Don't flipped. That's good. Leihai's going. Okay, so we do have a little bit of spare money left over. I think this... Mm, that's probably not the right building. I don't need a food multiplier at all. There's no food being produced. It's mainly peasantry income and industry income. And there is no direct synergies between the two. I actually think we probably end up needing a few conscription buildings just because to increase our seasonal retinue to a respectable level. And this might be the place we start building it. Copper mines are important. None high, definitely downgrade. Okay, so that's all done. No one's turning. She'll be dropped to 17, but still not turning. That's the capital administrator. We'll start with the kids. I think we want to wait a turn to get the next one. No one's turn coding. Hmm. Alrighty. That's fine. Nguyen's offering it to us for free. I think we take it. I think it's about four counties, including an armor smith. I lied. He lost it. <laughs> The one piece we really wanted, he didn't have. Lu Xiu fired. We have a lot of old people in the faction. Wait, where is... there's the old drunk? Where's your dad? You got a grudge? No, just high level. Okay. Take a sword. Be a little bit happier. Where is your dad? There he is. That's a nice item. I think my wife... Not her. Where is she? There it is. We're probably going to want that a bit more than public water. It's not 
going to be useful in that regard. Yeah, Lutra is like what? 71. Walan's not up there yet. He's 79. Retirement party in the faction. No wonder why he accepted. He had no army. I can't trade territory with Naman because they don't have the reforms for that yet. Uh, it's not cool. Honestly, I think they're going to declare war on us to get these land. And we probably will just end up losing it. I could trade this with Liu Bei to put him into the Shu lands. At the same time, pick up some of his land in the south. That might be a nice little way to do it. Because we're not getting that armorsmith anyways. We can direct Liu Bei to the right areas. 10 points. Let me get the cheaper one first, because I'm sure Chengdu will be worth a lot. We have a ton of items that we're not really ever going to use. These axes are not good. Probably per turn. Gonna be pricey, but I think we can afford it. And then we're also directing Liu Bei to the right area. Yet his capital is still going to be surrounded by us. That is the beauty of it. I don't want any... I mean, I kind of want this. 35. I kind of want the weaponsmith. Separate deals, then. We'll do the more expensive one because this is our best asset. That's a terrible armor. Never going to really use that. We have one more piece of land. So he can deal with the Naman people. Sixteen. Okay. Take one of these, one of these, one of these. I'll pay the rest. Perfect. Now our borders look much better. And we also got a weaponsmith. We would love to upgrade that. But uh, cash crunch right now, that's fine. Our borders look a lot better. The attitude issue is mainly with Cao Cao and the Naman. Seems like Naman has retaken some of the land. No, actually, they always held that. I think it's two turns. Yeah, we're we're at max fifty percent. Actually, could be higher. It could be higher. It could be because um, mustering isn't capped, so it could be like sixty six percent, which is still two turns. So not a big difference. I think that's all we can really do. Yeah, let's continue. I 
think we should... Whatever. It's always the minor factions. We just care about items. Water clock, not worth our time. Yeah, he doesn't like us. I want the construction cost. I don't care for either. Guess we could punish that enemy army. Free experience, we'll take that. Mess with Liu Bei. Oh! Liu Bu took over the faction? Don't mean died? Oh no, we can just target Liu Bu so he turns. Turn code time? Liu Bu? Nope, wishful thinking. Um, that's fine. So I think we targeted the bottom two. Let's do this. And then target. I know he doesn't turn coat. We already tested it before. He doesn't turn coat either. Maybe she will turn coat. Nope, none of them will turn coat. So we're at a dead end there. Lady Mies at very low values. I don't think we targeted her. I th oh, no, we did. No, there is no discredit faction anywhere. Yikes. Means we just need to wait for points. Oh, he earns it pretty slowly. It's not good. Who are we working towards? I guess Sun Ren would be the target. And we probably just need more points then. Alright, we have not taken a look into Ben Shao's faction. Yan Liang is still there. Is Ben Chou's Chiao Chiao is there. Ben Chou is also there. Yuan Tan, that's it. Okay. Plus 14, that's quite a lot. Please be... Uh, somehow I feel like he's going to have defense. We're not going to waste the points then. We'll do it next turn when we feel absolutely certain. Hong Sun Tu wanted to join us at least twice. There's, there's no one important here. So... Plus 11. We'll do 3 in power trade. And then send him on his way. That's it. Okay, that's just a broken screen. There we go. So we have two new enemies. Still a bunch of faction who would like to make us their vassal. Always good to hear. Our treachery's not going to die down. Anytime soon. <laughs> we are going to use our three deployments. So Domin declare war on us. We're safe. He has no path towards us. Our close... I mean, he can maybe sail down if he walk past. No, he can't even sail down. He can't touch us. I don't need to focus there. I can just focus here. So... How are we doing this? We... Probably just summon the same spot? Sorry. Same spot. And we will summon... Taishu Ci. It'd be nice if he can build a relationship with Zhou Tai. But um, I doubt it's going to be that easy. Zhou Yu is fine. We'll bring Guo Jia out here. Alright, load them up. So 
So we pick shaft mining. We should be going up this. We pick up this and this. This is more immediate help, just 6% flat. That actually increased our money quite a bit. It should go taller, but we don't have a lot of money. This is the one that I'm kind of hesitant to swap. I don't think it will actually reduce the corruption of any nearby one, but it will at least reduce the corruption in Pingyuan, so we'll still do it. State Workshop. That's going. Get us another seasonal deployment. Out of cash. Out of cash. Out of cash. Okay, I mean, that's fine. I don't think there's going to be anything that changed. Yep. Let's go. Let's see if anyone else want to join this war. Not quite. I know he doesn't like me, but, but they are a land that we want. So this one's a missing piece for us. This will give us access to his capital. Both are very important. They're not that expensive, to be honest. So first we'll buy this so he doesn't have any land over here and we can complete our commandery. I'm going to give him horses. And some of these items that are less than useful. He's going to want food. Ah, 3.5. We'll make a decent cash payment. Let's say you start at 5,000. Okay, let's see what, what is 15 for this. That's close enough. And then we're going to buy the land right next to his capital. I wonder if there's any piece of land that I could... I don't want to give him the temple back. These are all... completed. Yeah, we don't want to do any of those deals either. I mean, I just have to give him some quality items. I don't want to give him any... weapons, because those can be turned against us. Give him some armor instead. All the cash if we have to. Not that expensive, actually. But basically, we now have a point of entry to attack. What's going on, Tsao No trade access? Right, of course. He put his capital here where he doesn't have trade. He's landlocked down here. Even before we took that. And his capital's burning? Like, what's going on? So we have Kingdom of Shuhan and Kingdom of Wei basically under our supervision. Alright, we can sell out now. We want them to attack us, remember? We don't have any money, but we can summon three generals. I think it's going to be Zhou Tai's group. And the rivalry with Huang Gai is interesting too. So they can just like show up as extra generals for the fight, but 
How do we get them to fight in that scenario? I think we get the small army to encamp, the big army to ambush, and then they attack the encampment. They come in just as reinforcement instead of coming in as sort of a uh, attacking ambush force. I think that's how we can get a fight going. All right, we have no money, so there's nothing to do there. We do have some points here. If we're able to turn anyone, we will bar... I thought I had interference. Did it time out? I should have checked. I don't care about Huang Zhu. Minus 30, not willing to turn coat. That's the difficult part. I can't target anyone. No one wants to turn coat. Everyone's low. I can make her literally a one point and she's still not going to turn coat. So that's something, you know, we just have no way of dealing with. We have to target her because I think we targeted the other girl already. Lady Me is just also not willing to turn coat. That's just the way things are. Same thing here. We tested all of them already. I mean, we just have to wait for an opening. You never know. Maybe they will fire someone, do something really dumb, hire someone who's really dumb. Like, honestly, our entire scenario where we purged Cao Cao's court was all because he fired Guo Jia for a job and we got Guo Jia as a spy. If that never happened, we couldn't have purged him so hard. We have two level ups or maybe someone who's angry at us. I didn't check. I hope it's level ups. Yeah, we figured this was going to happen, which is why we had to give up all those land. Because now we have to defend, we can defend here instead of like all these land here. Nobody already lost one of the land we gave him. Okay, that's fine. We just have to send an army. We just have to summon a new army south. No big deal. Someone was sieging him. Gong Sun Zan's naval assault. Right, we remember seeing Gong Sun Zan's army sailing down. Wow. Well, Cao Cao might retake it. He's coming back. We gotta fight. Anyhow, I think we're actually gonna end the episode here. Because it's about to get messy. We have to do some actual fighting. We have to play some actual defense. We're going to try the baiting tactic over here. Yeah, but we're going to wipe him here and then take Jiang Xia. We'll keep it. We got to find a way to get to his capital. We could buy his land, you know, that that's our solution. We literally can buy all the land surrounding his capital and have sort of a three surrounded capital scenario. We set up our armies and we basically just wipe them in one turn. And we wouldn't be able to attack Kingdom of Yen because he and, and, and Obey as well, because they haven't declared war against us, right? That's That's our thing. We have to make one of them declare war against us. I think the trick ultimately is, is become one of their vassals when they're fighting each other. And then we kill off one, grab a seat, become an emperor, and thus automatically declare independence and declare war on the one that we have, and then we immediately wipe them afterward. So I think we have the solution to that problem. But we'll do a little bit of fighting first. We haven't really got to use our units. Okay, it's just the level ups. No one's actually mad at us. Good. We have a lot of generals we could use. There's a lot of generals we should purge, actually. We don't need all these people. We'll figure out who we need to kill, who we need to uh, keep next time. So until then, bye.